So you clicked on this video because you want to set up an iSCSI share in your TrueNAS server. Well, lucky day, that's exactly what we're going to do. So no sexy intro, none of that. Let's dive right into doing just that. So here I am in my TrueNAS dashboard. I am using TrueNAS Core. If you're using Scale, the instructions are going to be relatively the same, so don't worry. First thing we're going to do is go into here in storage and go to your pools. This is where we are going to allocate however much space we want to a Z vol. So pick your pool. I have a few here. I'm going to be going on my big boy. So you're going to go into your main file system, click these three buttons over here and add Z vol. So we're going to give it a name. We will call it iSCSI main PC. Then we are going to give it a size. And for the most part, this is going to be shared directly with one machine. Now you can create shares off of that, but rule of thumb, this is only going to be used by a single machine. So if you want a bunch of different iSCSI shares on a bunch of different machines, make sure you're allocating space just for those clients individually. So for this, We'll just give it 500 gigabytes. It doesn't matter. Then you have this force size checkbox. And essentially what that does is it overrides the default property that won't let you create a Z vol that would bring the pool to over 80% capacity. So we don't have to worry about that here. Sync, we are going to do standard compression level, recommended LZ4, unless you have a specific compression level you want to use. Deduplication, this is going to be off. Now you can leave all of this just blank and hit next and it'll use the default values, but you know, we'll, we'll set them. Then down in advanced options, you can modify the block size. It's default to 32 uh, and I'd up it to 128. This is block storage. So the size of the blocks are going to determine your efficiency and speed. So larger blocks are going to be faster, but less efficient. And smaller blocks are going to be more efficient, but slower. 128, I'm good with that. That's pretty standard. So we're going to use that. Then hit submit. And just like that, it has been created. 500 gigabytes, boom. Now to actually create the iSCSI share. So go down into sharing, into block shares. And in here, you can set everything up manually if you want, or you can use the wizard. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the wizard because we're kinky. All right, so go ahead and give it a name. We are going to call it iSCSI on TrueNAS. Then the extent type is device because we created that Z vol and you'll see that we can select it. Bada bing, bada boom. And the sharing platform, if you're doing this on a modern operating system, like it says here, uh, go with that. Or if you're using something more specific, you'll want to select one of these other options. But we're sharing directly to a Windows machine. So we are going to use modern OS. Okay, here's where we're going to specify the portal. And since we don't have one yet, we are creating a new one. In here, you can specify if you want an authentication method, you can leave it to none if you don't want there to be any user authentication, but we do. So we will set this to chap. You have chap and you have mutual chap. Chap is perfectly fine for most cases. Mutual just means it's a client and server. Um, both ways authentication, but for this chap is perfectly fine. So then we'll have to create an authentication group. We'll create one, give it a number 69. Nice. Uh, give it a user. We'll call it TrueNAS user. Then a password. You'll never guess what it is. Comment down below what you think my password is. Winner gets 500 raid out points. And then IP address is the IP address that the iSCSI portal is listening on. So 0.0.0, .0, .0 just means it's listening on everything. So we'll leave that. And then port, just leave it to default unless you have that port occupied already. Now you can add multiple IP addresses if you click add over here. If you wanna add specific IP addresses, you can add as many as you want, but uh, we, don't, we don't need that since it's listening on every single IP address. Initiators, this is essentially your clients and you can leave this blank if you just want any client to be able to connect back or you can specify a list of initiators here. So when you set up an iSCSI client, uh, that client is going to have a specific name. And if you want to just have a list of names that are authorized to connect, this is where you would do it. And as well as networks. So if you only want this on a specific subnet, you could say, I only want this to be able to connect from 10.0.0.1 slash 24. 
and then only machines on that subnet will be able to connect. But again, we just want it open. I believe this computer I'm running on is on this subnet, so it wouldn't change anything, but that's where you would do it. Confirm these options, everything looks good, and hit submit. You can see I have made an error. So only uh, lowercase is allowed here. That looks good, sure. See, I'm not perfect, I make mistakes. Cool, so if we go to portals, you'll see that we have this up and running. And one thing you'll want to confirm down in services is that the iSCSI service is actually running. This isn't running, you'll see your portal, and when you try to connect, nothing will happen. So make sure that this is running. So yeah, you are done on your TrueNAS machine. You are free to go connect to it from your client device. In this case, we are using Windows 11, so I'll show you how to do it on Windows. Oh yeah, shameless plug for the Discord. Join the Discord. Description down, down in the description below if you wanna come hang out with us, a uh, bunch of nerds. But yeah, uh, I'm on Windows 11. It's gonna be pretty much exactly the same on Windows 10. What you wanna do is search for iSCSI Initiator. <coughs> Ooh, puberty. iSCSI Initiator, and you'll want to go into Discovery. And this is gonna be where you're going to discover your iSCSI portal. But first thing, actually, we are going to go into Configuration. And you can see this is where, remember how I said each client has an initiator name? Well, this is where you specify it. You can see I've given mine a name, iSCSI, on main PC. So that's, if I wanted that initiator list of authorized clients, then that's where I would do it. But yeah, there's my name. When you initially set this up, it's probably gonna be this weird long string of gibberish. So feel free to change that. But yeah, we're going to go to discovery. We are going to discover portal. And here you will type in the IP address of your TrueNAS instance. So again, we set it open to 0.0.0.0, but if you specified specific IP addresses, this is where you would enter it. I know my TrueNAS instance is on 10.0.0.33. And one thing you wanna make sure to do is click this advanced if you used CHAP authorization. So we'll go down here, enable CHAP login, and we will specify the name. And I can't remember what we did. I think TrueNAS user. And the password, again, you guys never, you're never gonna guess what it is. Click OK, click OK, then go over here to targets. And you should see that it connected right here. So we're gonna refresh and there you go. Cause remember that's the name we gave it, iSCSI.TrueNAS. Uh, you can see that's the one we want. And you can see it's inactive and it's inactive because we haven't connected yet. So we're going to connect. That's the target name. You can leave that default, hit OK. And we are connected just like that. Our Windows machine is connected to our TrueNAS machine, to our iSCSI volume. And we can use that as if pretty much like it's a local drive, which is extremely convenient if you wanna host all of your Steam games on your NAS. So how do we know that it worked? Well, go into disk, create and format hard disk partitions. And you will see just like that, it's asking me it found new unallocated space. Do you want to initialize it? Sure, why not? Hit OK, and you'll see down here, just like that, 500 gigabytes of unallocated space. New simple volume. We'll call this uh, mounted to E. We'll call it iSCSI. Next, finish, and boom. Just like that, when you go into your uh, Explorer, you'll see we have the iSCSI drive mounted right here and it's under the local drives. You'll see I have my network locations here, but iSCSI acts almost entirely as local storage because it's not really a file system hosted on the server. Like if you were to do an SMB share, iSCSI sets up block storage on the server and everything is done by the client. So that's why it kind of sees it as a local drive. So then if I wanted, I could go into Steam, go into settings, downloads, Steam library folders, and then we could go and add, now what I wanted to do, why is this the tiniest little scrolling? Who designed this? Oh, it's a dropdown. But yeah, we can select our local drive E. God, this is terrible UI. Add, and just like that, we have a Steam library over iSCSI on our TrueNAS server. There's not much to it. It's gonna perform just as well as any other share. It will be determined by your hard drive configuration, your RAID configuration, your network speed. But for the most part, it's gonna perform very similarly to SMB. Um, there are instances where one is faster than the other, but 
unless you're in like an enterprise environment or doing very specific things on it, uh, normal use is going to look very similar between Samba, SMB, and iSCSI. So there you have it. Uh, I hope this worked for you guys. Uh, let me know down in the description how you're using iSCSI or if this worked for you, I would be delighted to hear your experience. But that is it. If you liked it, drop a like. If you got content like this, please subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.